Welcome to Cafe Racer Garage, I am Dan and I share the process on building all the different aspects of a motorcycle. If that's something you're interested in, you're in the right place. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how I remove some of those really hard to get off gaskets, as well as using some tools to do this that I've not used before. So, let's get into it. I've got a few motorcycle engine parts here to do a bit of a test run on the gaskets that are stuck to them. Let's see how it goes. Some of the standard gasket removal tools look a little bit like this. If the gaskets are fairly loose, you can generally get away with using a scraper and a few razor blades. But let's be honest, you're probably not watching this video because the gaskets are easy to remove. You could get yourself a gasket stripper like this, which comes in a spray can. You leave it on for five or 10 minutes and then pretty much scrape your gasket off. You may have to do it a couple of times to try and get that gasket off completely, but you've also got to be super careful that if you're working around painted surfaces that it'll take the paint off as well. So just be mindful of that. There's two more methods I want to mention and one of them I'm actually waiting on the tool that I ordered online to arrive. It's going to be here any day. So that one will probably be right towards the end of the video. I want to thank the owner Ben from Precise Engine Rebuilders for lending me this tool. After I told him I was going to do this video, he said, hey, I've got pretty much the exact tool that you need. Having said that, this is not the cheapest option, but if time is of essence to you and you don't want to sit there for hours, this is probably something you'd want to invest in. So it's actually a tungsten tipped scraper and he said this is what he uses all the time and for an engine rebuilder to say that, it must be good. If you've ever tried to remove a gasket that's on there really hard using one of these guys, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it is not easy. I initially didn't have any gaskets stuck to anything to make this video so I went down to a wrecker and one of the things that I found which was quite surprising was that the wrecker had a lot of old parts and nothing that was old had the gasket attached to it. It was just falling off which makes me realize that maybe the older gaskets weren't as good as the newer ones, or possibly once those engine parts heat up and cool down once they're being split from the engine, it might actually release the gasket itself. Meaning if you can replicate that with a heat gun or an oven, and you can heat it up and let it cool down, heat it up, let it cool down, while it's off the bike, it might just simply peel the gasket off for you. You may not even need to do too much to it. So both of these tools work. The scraper works in its own way. It's probably good for the bulky stuff. Whereas the razor blade, uh, just like when you're having a shave, it's probably a closer shave and it does a little bit more of the finer work. And by all means, if you do have another method that you think works really well, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. The fastest, but also the most aggressive way to take the gaskets off, which I do not recommend unless you are quite experienced with using these sort of tools, is a die grinder with a Scotch-Brite disc. It can completely destroy the part in such a short amount of time if you're not careful. Not recommended by engine rebuilders and probably something I shouldn't really recommend, but I have done it. It can be done safely if you use a really old disc and just take your time and don't press hard and just really just work that main part of the gasket off and then just clean up with the finishing parts. Uh, like I said, it can be done safely if you're careful and I mean really careful. So this gasket here is so far the hardest to take off. It is really on there quite well in some places. So let's get the tungsten scraper out. Well, I must say I'm pretty damn impressed with this thing already. I've only used it between here and here. And you've got to be careful not to sort of tilt it because you can scrape off the side of the aluminium. But just from there to there, it looks like it's still got gasket on there, but it is so smooth. You probably just want to use a scraper to start with to get rid of the bulk of it and then run over it with the tungsten. And it seems to be a pretty awesome way of doing it. I'm definitely a huge fan of this thing. I can see why they use them and I'm probably going to invest in one myself. So that there is ridiculously smooth. It already feels like it's just come off a machine that's just resurfaced it. And all I've used is the tungsten scraper. Gasket stripper comes out a little bit like an oven cleaner spray. You're meant to be able to scrape the gasket off about 10 minutes after you've sprayed it on. My verdict on the gasket stripper is yes, it definitely works. It takes off some of the glue and helps you to take that gasket out, but you will need to take the bulk of it off to get it to work. It's actually quite a therapeutic thing to do once you get a bit of flow happening. And just remember, it's a journey. Enjoy the process, crack a beer, have a coffee, and just take your time with it. 
I have to return this scraper, but I'm definitely going to be investing in one. I'll leave a link in the description to this exact one. If you're not going to invest in one, you can still use the blade. It does work. It's just a little bit slower, a little bit harder, but it does work. So there's a new product that's come out. I actually don't know how new it is, but it's made by 3M and it's called Rolock. They're bristle discs. This is a 120 grit. I'm going to press really lightly. I've seen them used in this application before, so I know they work. I just got to try and see how it goes on the aluminium because I think this will work really well on steel blocks. But most of the stuff that we'll be doing is aluminium. I definitely don't recommend these things. Uh, it forces you to push too hard and I feel like that's going to cause problems, especially in little areas like this, uh, where you could potentially take off one side and then round uh, this flat surface. So not a fan of it. Don't think it's the way to go. Doing everything by hand is definitely smarter. So what I'm going to do is quickly vapor blast them and show you what they look like in the end. When it comes to replacing the gaskets, don't cheap out when you purchase them. Make sure you get the OEM quality ones that you know are going to fit up, they're cut correctly and they're not going to leak. They're designed for the bike and therefore they're going to fit the bike perfectly. That's why I buy all my gaskets from CMSNL because I can guarantee they are OEM quality and they fit perfectly first time. You don't want to go to all that work of cleaning up the old gasket and then replace it with a cheap one only to find in a few months time that it starts leaking. If you've enjoyed this video, I've got two more that I know you're going to love. How to get that brushed aluminium finish and also how to build an exhaust template using PVC pipe to get any shape that you want.